connecting with the presence of our creator. Artist Pablo Picasso said every act of creation is first of all an act of destruction. Hmm. He had to tear down the old building to put up a new one. That means that whenever God leads us into new territory in our lives, the way we've always done, life will change. Something will be different. Sometimes what holds us back is our fear that if we don't just plow forward in the same old ways, we won't be able to handle the change. Hear the good news. You can handle changes. Why? Because God is always with us. As our greeting and passing of the peace today, I invite you to turn to your neighbor and greet them with the assurance, you've got this. (laughs) We don't need to know what it is that each of us is struggling um, to change in our lives in order to create more goodness and freedom. We just need to remind each other that we're not alone, that we're supporting one another. When we get a chance to look at our world from up high or by, sta- by taking a step back to look at the big picture, we can see all sorts of things in new ways. Sometimes it's easy for us to get hung up on small details that keep us from seeing this big picture. Maybe we make a mistake and we feel embarrassed or frustrated. Maybe we have an argument with someone, uh, with a, a friend, um, and we start to wonder if they really still love us. And the big picture is that you are loved by lots of people, by your family, by your friends, by your church community, by God. Nothing you will ever do can change the fact that God loves you. Did you notice the first line of this text? This is a different translation, same text that says, now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember last week, the first line of the text also had the Holy Spirit in it? This text itself comes before the one we read last week. We normally don't do that, but with this series, um, we, we are jumping around a little bit. So this is what Luke does, is he talks about the Holy Spirit helping to guide people and comfort people. So we've got that again here in this text. Uh, last week, we talked about Jesus in the temple and reading the Isaiah scroll and um, making everyone so mad they drove him out of the temple and wanted to toss him off a cliff. <laughs> but this week, we're, ha- we're, we're in the what happened before that. And This is a little bit of a wild story involving Jesus and the devil. And in some translations, uh, the word devil is temptation. Now, what was happening was Jesus was in the wilderness, and he was praying, and he was fasting. And it says for 40 days. Um, Now, 40 days is a biblical number, and there is argument as to whether it's actually 40 days. It means a long time. Has anyone here ever fasted? Anybody done a fast? Yeah. Yeah. Fasting does interesting things to your mind and your imagination, doesn't it? (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) So one of the things I I like about this, and I I think I preached on this already once this year, um, it reminds me of a Christmas carol. And when Scrooge is shown by the ghost of Christmas past and the ghost of Christmas present and the ghost of Christmas future, what could be possible? And also with It's a Wonderful Life. Remember when the main character is shown what life would have been like without his existence. So this reminds me of that a little bit in that um, the tempter or the devil is testing Jesus and he's testing him in three ways. And he's saying, uh, remember, Jesus is hungry. He's been fasting. Well, how about you turn that into a loaf of bread? You know, imagine if you were that hungry and you had a hot, steamy loaf of bread in front of you, right? That's a big test. Didn't work. So then he tests him with power. You know, all of this could be yours because power is a strong draw for a lot of people, right? But not for Jesus. Didn't work. And then the third thing was almost there. You know, well, if your God is so good, show me. Jump off this spire 
and your angels will catch you, and, and then I'll know that your God is really who you say your God is. Right? And power, that dare sort of touches on shame, and it touches on worth. It touches on a lot of those deep human emotions that we get caught up in sometimes. But none of the tests worked. None of them worked because Jesus was focused. Jesus was focused on the big picture, on his ministry and on what he had to do with God and for God, with the people. So the testing didn't work at all. There's a book that I may have mentioned before by Ronald Heifetz and Marty Linsky called Leadership on the Line. And in this book, um, the authors talk about, they use a, a metaphor to gaining, for gaining perspective. And what they say um, has to do with a dance floor. Has anyone been on a really crowded dance floor? Or maybe on the floor of a concert? Have you ever been really crowded in, in that situation? What can you see when you're in that situation? What do you see? The back of somebody's head. What else? Can you see a lot? No, you see what's right around you. You can't tell if there's someone over the punch bowl getting punched. You can't tell if there's someone who's sitting on the sideline not being included. You can't tell if people are coming in or people are leaving or, or they're having conversations. You can't really see. So what Heifetz and Linsky say is that you need to get off the dance floor and up onto the balcony to get that perspective. And when you get up onto the balcony, then you can better see the big picture. And you can see who's at the punch bowl. You can see who's not dancing or who's being left out. You can see who's being shy. You can see who's leaving or who's coming in. You get a better view of what's going on when you're up on the balcony. And so the suggestion is that leaders do that every once in a while. They get up off the dance floor and take a look so that they can focus. And Jesus, rooted in love, was focused on his ministry and was not going to be distracted by these shiny things that were tempting him um, in the wilderness. And so if I get up on the balcony, and if you get up on the balcony with me, um, there are some things we might see, right, as Inlet United Church, as community. We uh, have done a lot of things. What was a dream turned into the reality of this building. And we also have another building that is turning 99 years old this year. We are blessed with buildings. <laughs> we have um, people from St. Andrews. We have people from Ioko. And we have people who are not affiliated with either of those things who have come in the doors and have stayed. And more people are coming to check us out. Um, so we are richly blessed with many things. If you're comfortable doing so, close your eyes for just a moment so you can do some visualization. Breathe in slowly and let your breath out slowly. And let's do that again, in and out. And try to imagine that your stresses, your anxieties, your deadlines, off your head and down your shoulders and down your arms and falling away to the floor. Last week, we visualized a blue sky above us. Now imagine that you are in that blue sky, hovering above this community. Imagine that something was broken in the scene below and that it has now been healed, it has been fixed. What do you see? What one thing do you imagine would make this world, your life, the lives of your family and community so much better? And let's continue with prayers of the people. Loving God, we pray that the things we have just imagined come to be. 
We pray today for all the places that things are broken, that things need to be healed. We pray for those experiencing the flash floods around the world, in South Korea in particular, um, in Pennsylvania there was a flash flood. We pray for all of those affected by uh, the effects of climate change. We pray for those experiencing forest fires and those working in forest fires and we particularly pray for the family of the young woman who, uh, the firefighter who died this week in the line of duty. We pray for all of those who are affected with the smoke. And we continue in prayer as we say together the paraphrase of the Lord's Prayer. Earth, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world, your heavenly will be done by all created beings, your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. We're going to move into the offering or the announcement time. And um, there are, are lots of announcements in our newsletter. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, you can go on to inletunited.ca and you can sign up and get news in your inbox every week to know what we're doing. Um, that's one way to keep up. We have an interesting event happening here on Tuesday evening um, at 6.30. And we have artist Athena Picha coming to talk about Coast Salish art. And Athena is the person who is going to be leading the painting of the mural on our building. And this is the first of four events, am I right? The first of four events. Um, and she will be uh, talking about Coast Salish art Tuesday night. And then the following Tuesday night at 6.30, she's gonna be listening. There will be a listening time where um, we and the community and anybody who wants to come can talk about their vision of what they'd like to see. And then a few more weeks will go by and she will come back on a Sunday after church and show us uh, the drawing, the painting. Um, and then the work will begin in August and we'll have another celebration, blessing and feast in September. So lots going on and it all begins this Tuesday night. lots of other things going on. Um, I'm going to be bringing some info hopefully in the next couple of weeks about um, a trip that uh, my husband Scott and I are hoping to lead in uh, the end of January, beginning of February. We're going to take a tour group to, um, to Israel, Palestine and Jordan uh, to do a biblical highlights tour. This is a tour that's been postponed twice because of COVID. Um, but we're hoping that it's a go this year, and um, I'll have more information on that if you're interested in uh, coming to see some of these places. Another date to save is uh, in August, on a Thursday night, the 17th of August, we are going to be at our other location, our little 99-year-old heritage church at 7 o'clock in the evening for a Taze contemplative style worship experience. And if you haven't experienced Teze worship, it is quiet, meditative singing, uh, contemplation, prayer, candles. It's very peaceful. So if you'd like to come enjoy the peace, um, there are flyers out there as well. And uh, that will be in August on a Thursday evening 
at our Heritage Church. So you're welcome to, uh, to join us there.